Here now is Art Laffer, Laffer Associates chairman and former Reagan economic advisor. I got to say, uh, I've I've liked the Koch brothers for a long time. I think they're very smart people. I love their their libertarian ideology. I, I agree with them in terms of fair trade and, and free trade. However, Art, and this may be one point, a minor, minor point in which we disagree. You look at these headlines that I put up before. Chinese economy starts to feel tariff impact. Eurozone economy slows further as exports sputter. And you see them coming back to the negotiating table with Mnuchin. And I think, yeah, maybe the president's hardball has led to some really positive results. What do you think? Well, I think the Kochs and the president agree on the final objective. I mean, we want zero tariffs, zero subsidies, zero non-tariff barriers. I mean, I think the Kochs want that. I think President Trump wants that. The question is the strategy. How do you go right. about actually achieving that? And that's a tough decision to make. And Trump has one procedure for going about and bringing them to the table and negotiate. It looked like it worked pretty well with the EU sure and does. Juncker when he was here. And it's bringing China back now, maybe. And it looks like it may even be working with Mexico. But, you know, bottom line, the Kochs have been phenomenal for generations yeah. in this country in supporting good they free market have. pro-growth, democratic, And doing a lot of charity work, too. Policy. But that's a whole other. I want to get to taxes because this new yes. plan to index capital gains, to take inflation into account so that uh, you're not being charged double, one, the, co the, the tax cost, and two, the, the cost of inflation. Uh, immediately, Nancy Pelosi came, came out and said there's another giveaway to the rich. But don't millions and millions of Americans have stocks that could be taxed for capital gains as well? Of course. I mean, this will spread over a lot more than just a couple of people. Uh, the question that, that I think maybe makes some sense here, David, and try me on this, you know, rewarding people historically for something is, it, is not a good pro-growth incentive. Uh, but if you had the capital gains tax indexing prospectively, so starting today, all inflation gains are eliminated going forward. That would be a pure supply side tax cut that would be great and would have very little budget impact. And now, by the way, by the, before we get into that, I mean, the fact is a lot of Americans also have second homes, which they sell at an increased price. And that, that could mean a huge difference in their tax bill in terms of, of their selling sure their property after its accumulated value. Yeah. And the other thing that is, if, if you do it retrospectively, OK, and you allow capital gains, no matter when earned, to be indexed to the inflation from that point in time, we have seen historically that capital gains tax rate reductions lead to increases yeah, in revenue. It happened during that Clinton and it could happen very, now. Very, all the time. It's just right. one of the most certain, great certainties there. So if you want more revenues, that may well be a darn good idea to do. But capital gains taxes should be indexed for inflation, okay. period. We've got six seconds happen. over question, a lot of time. We've got, it, we've got to have <laughs> oh, it to I'm the sorry, second David, because I, of Apple. I just keep talking. Uh, we could talk for hours. Art, great but to see you. Thank you thanks for the comparison with uh, Paul Krugman. I enjoyed yeah, that. that. Hey, <laughs> Melissa, thank you very You're much, You're not too. even in the same ballpark, you and he, but that's a oh, whole other issue. There you go.